Hey booktube, it's Jackie. How's it going? If you are new to me, it's the first time you're seeing my face. Hello, what's up? My name's Jackie. I sit on my floor and I talk about books. So that's why you're here because that's what's gonna be happening today. If you're not new to me, thank you for always tuning in the continued support. I really do appreciate it. So today for you, I have a tag video. This is a tag that I saw Becky over at Beck X Reads do. She didn't specifically tag me, but she said I could do it anyway and say that she tagged me. So <laughs> thanks, Becky. <laughs> I will link her channel down below along with her video of this tag. And that is the finally fall tag. I know it's coming up a little bit late, but truthfully, um, right now the leaves are pretty much all changed. All the leaves have changed. So I have all these beautiful autumnal colors down my street. The wind is blowing pretty strong outside and it's just, it's a perfect autumn day. And I'm just, it just feels right to do now. So Without further ado, grab yourself a drink, have yourself a seat, and let's get talking about my finally fall tag picks. Okay, so I got a few questions here. Let's just go right down the line. First question. In the fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid fall setting. Um, this is a little difficult. So this is a newbie for me. I just recently completed this, and that is Long Live the Pumpkin Queen by Shay Earnshaw. It is not technically like the fall, the pretty fall setting. Our fall setting is Halloween Town, <laughs> which I think is nice and fall and appropriate. So yes, Shay Earnshaw goes into great detail of kind of describing the town and a lot of the other holiday towns as well, mostly because she wants to tie in the actual Nightmare Before Christmas movie because this is the after story. This is after Nightmare Before Christmas has taken place. Jack and Sally have gotten married and Sally just doesn't know how to handle being a queen and so she has to go through trials and tribulations and basically save Halloween Town because she causes something to happen that hurts everybody but she finds her inner queen and uh becomes the badass that Sally is but it is definitely set against a really beautiful Halloween spooky fall setting so definitely the only option I really had for this one that would fit in my opinion. Next question. Nature is beautiful, but it's also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic such as loss or grief. Um, this is an oldie for me, and this is one of my favorites. Uh, this is Paulina Simon's The Bronze Horseman. This book... <laughs> this book just rips me apart so much. This is the first installment to the Bronze Horseman's trilogy. I have not completed the trilogy, but I have read this book and I did a full book review for it. I'll link it down below along with a, it up here in the corner um, back in the day when I first started my channel. So this is an oldie one, but this one, oh my God, I just, this thing was so painfully exquisite. Oh my God. Um, we follow Tatiana and Alexander's love story during the, um, during communist Russia, World War II Russia during World War II Russia. And it's just, it's so exquisitely written. It's so beautiful. Um, I just, I loved this book when I read it for the first time. It was, oh, I should probably reread this again because this is a series I need to finish because this thing was so excellent and the sex scenes are fantastic in it. Um, but the descriptive writing that Simons does, um, like they're talking about a blueberry pie. I believe it was like a blueberry pie and they were on these rations during World War II, so they didn't really have a lot of sugar or butter or anything. But the way that she described Tatiana making this blueberry pie, I could taste this pie. It was so descriptive. It was so, oh my God. She just, the way Paula Seaman writes with her words is just exquisite. But we do deal with a lot of heavy topics, World War II, um, death, families being torn apart, a lot of heavy, a lot of heavy stuff in this. This, When I say this is painfully, ex exquisitely painful, I mean it. This thing is designed to rip your heart out and stomp on it multiple times. So be warned about this one. This, this one's a tearjerker. Holy crap it is. <laughs> um, number three, fall is back to school season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. Clanlands by Sam Hewitt and Graham Matavish. I listened to this on audio earlier this year and I loved it. It was one of my five star reads of the year. And this thing just made me laugh. It just, oh, the banter between Sam Hewitt and Graham Matavish 
is just on point. They're like this old married couple and I just want to be part of their family. It was so awesome. But what we do through this is we actually go through different areas of Scotland and I got to learn about different massacres, different celebrations and things of that nature. So I did learn a lot from this book about the country of Scotland and its history in relation to Outlander, which Sam Hewen and Graham McTowers are both stars of the show. Sam Hewen plays the uncomparable, the ultimately perfect Jamie Frazier and Graham McTavish is McDougal, his uncle. Yeah, his uncle. Um, yes. So this thing taught me so much, but I definitely listened to it for Sam Hewen's voice. <laughs> Let's just be honest about that. Yeah. But there's a lot of good kernels of wisdom in this one. Number four, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with the people we love. Name a fictional family, household, friend group that you'd like to be part of. I have watched this tag boot on a lot of people's channels and a very, very popular answer is the same friend group that I want to be in. And that's the inner circle of A Court of Mist and Fury. I want to be part of that group. I want it so bad. Mm. Sarah J Mass writes friend, found family, friend groups so fucking well. You just want to be part of it. You you want to experience the ups and the downs, especially the downs because that's when you really see the the bond that these people have together. During good times, everything's fine. But during the bad times, that bond just shines through. And it's so amazing that I just want to be part of it. And I want to be close to Reese. I just want to be in his vicinity. Maybe closer than just in the vicinity. <laughs> but yes, this is my found family. Keep warm. Yes, right here. Ah, so good. Number five, nights are getting darker. Share a dark, creepy read. I have a couple of these um, because I just couldn't pick. So I have a classic and that is Bram Stoker's Dracula. And this is my cloth bound penguin edition. If you are not familiar with these, these things are stunning. I collect these. They're just absolutely beautiful. And my husband bought me this. Um, it's one of my favorites. And this is the classic story of Dracula by Bram Stoker. Awesome. Very dark, very creepy read. But I also picked one that I read last year, and that's Kirsten Wright's The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. This is kind of a gender-bending retelling of Frankenstein, and it was very dark and very creepy and kind of threw me for a fucking loop. It really did. I was not expecting the ending that this book had. Um, and I'm not a huge Kirsten White fan. I read And I Darken, which was her gender rebending, her gender bending tale of Vlad the, Vlad the Impaler, who I'm a huge fan of. I love studying him. So I was really pumped for that book and I just didn't really care for it. So I was a little timid of picking this up, but I really enjoyed this. I had a good time with it. Um, definitely something um to read during the spooky season if you are looking for a monster wreck yeah definitely totally worth it all right the next question the days are getting colder name a short heartwarming read that could warm up someone on a cold rainy day i don't have a lot of short books per se um i don't so i went with something that reads really fast and that is The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling. This is a nice fall recommendation as well. It's set during the fall. Uh, we follow Vivian and Reese. And uh, Vivian is a witch and Reese is a witch as well. And they had a little summer fling and it didn't go too well because Reese said I need to go end my engagement in um, England where he's from. Wales? I can't remember where he's from. Um, but... Vivian's like the fuck and she loses her shit and with her cousin they curse Reese and the curse sticks and he has to come back nine years later where the curse officially latches onto him and we just have this rom-com of really heavy topics told in a very funny entertaining way this is this was a good time I enjoyed this this is also in my witchy recommendations video which I will link down below and a card up here as well if you're looking for any witch recommendations uh this was definitely on my list along with some of my other fellow collab buddies of that um rec so this is a good one and it's short I mean it reads really fast it and the banter is fucking phenomenal in this all right, I have to flip the page. 
There we go. <laughs> I have my notes. Uh, number seven, the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. I tend to like the oranges, the golds, and the reds of fall, so that's what I went with. Here you go. So we have the Crimson Petal, the Crimson Petal and the White by Michael Faber. Um, I have not read this, but um, it was a book club of my local library. They were reading it, and that's why I purchased it, but I actually couldn't make that meaning, so I ended up never reading it, and I don't remember what it's about. Um... Let's see. Meet Sugar, a 19-year-old prostitute in Victorian London who yearns for escape to a better life. From the brothel of the terrifying Mrs. Castaway, she begins her ascent through society, beginning with William Rackham, a perfume magnet whose lust for sugar soon begins to smell like love. She meets a host of lovable, maddening, unforgettable characters as her social rise is overseen by assorted preening socialities, drunken journalists, untrustworthy servants, vile gutter snipes, and whores of all kinds. Why have I not fucking read this yet? Holy shit, I need to read this. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, my next book in my pile is Shayla Black's Decadent. This is the second installment to the Wicked Lovers series. I read Wicked Ties um, for my book club last year, and it wasn't the biggest hit among my book club, but I did want to continue with this series because I liked the steam that these books have. So I do um, plan on picking this up eventually. Um, another one in this pile that I've not read is Stephen King's The Gunslinger. I had to throw a horror novel on there and Stephen King, you know, he's the, the horror king. So I had to throw him on there. And this is the first installment of the Dark Tower series. It was turned into a film. Um, I remember seeing the film and not liking it very much, but my father-in-law is a huge Stephen King fan. And he said, since I do well with series, I should probably start off with my series. So that's why I picked this one up. But I just haven't read it yet. Also in this pile, I have Abby Glines Until Friday Night. This is one of my five-star reads of this year. We follow Maggie and Wes. Maggie's a self-imposed mute after seeing some trauma. She has pro uh, prohibited herself from speaking because she just doesn't want to relive it. And Wes is currently dealing with losing his father from pancreatic cancer and needs to talk about it but refuses to talk about it with his teammates. So he talks to Maggie, who he thinks won't talk back, but she talks to him because he needs it. And they start to form this beautiful, sweet high school romance that I just fucking want. This book gave me all the feels of being back in high school, waiting for that Friday night game, wanting the guy to give me my jersey. This fucking hit so many levels for me and I just fucking loved it. Um, I bought the rest of the series because I liked it so much and I am in the process of continuing it. Another popular book in this spine question was Diana Gamelon's Dragonfly and Amber because of its color but I didn't want to do that one so I actually have Diana Gamelon's Seven Stones and Stand or Fall this is all the novellas that fall in between these books in a bind up so I threw this one in here I have not read it so I, I just I haven't read it yet I read all of them but except for the very very last one I just haven't read that and the last book is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This is the first installment to a high dark fantasy. And this thing was five stars for me. This was one of my favorite books of the year so far. This thing's fucking awesome. It is Interview with a Vampire, but on fucking steroids. And we follow our silver saint, um, Gabriel Dillone. And it's just, oh my God, the way this story is told is so fucking awesome. I love Gabriel. He's such a badass. I gotta fucking love it. I need the next installment so fucking bad. I hope Jay Kristoff comes out with it soon. But this edition has some beautiful pieces of artwork in it. Oh my god. I just, I fucking love this book. I love it so much. So, so, so much. So that's my spine question. Do it one more time so you can see it all nice and fall and pretty. Woo. <laughs> all right. The eighth question, fall returns every year. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. Um, I didn't, I mean, I should return to the Bronze Horseman. That was a favorite of mine. I should return to that. But I picked an author that I haven't read in a long time. I read Francine Rivers' Redeeming Love when I was in college. And I fucking loved that book. I loved it. I reread it probably four times. And I don't have a copy of it right now because I remember walking out to my car and sitting on top of my car and then I drove off and I lost it and I've just never repurchased it. 
So I'd like to revisit her, and I do have one of her series. I have the Mark of the Lion series, and the first installment of it is A Voice in the Wind. So I'd like to revisit, revisit her sometime soon. And um, nine, last question. Fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessories. Well, there are two accessories that I have when I read. Um, even in the summertime, I have these out. So I have, always I have a drink usually. And I have my thermos that you see in my videos. It says, fuck off, I'm reading. This is usually out when I am reading at all times. And then I'm usually curled up on the couch with a blanket. And this is the blanket. It's got little teddy bears on it. And this blanket is actually my baby blanket. It was bought for me before I was born. I was in the womb with my mother. It is super old, but I have taken so good care of it. Um, yeah, my mom raised me to take care of my things. So I have a lot of stuff from my childhood that looks still fairly pristine. But yes, this is the blanket I curl up with when I'm reading. And if this blanket is put away because it's being cleaned or washed, I just usually use um, one of our felt blankets that my tied knot felt, felt blankets that we have. So that's my finally fall tag video, guys. Um, if you would like to do this tag, feel free. I know a lot of people have already done it, so I'm not going to tag a bunch of people. But if you have not done it and you want to, we're still in the thick of fall. Be my guest, rock it on, and let me know what you got. So I will see you guys all soon with another video.